Good people of Atlanta, we must never forget that Anthony Bourdain killed himself. <laughs> Anthony Bourdain had the greatest job the show business ever produced. This nigga flew around the world and ate delicious meals with outstanding people. That man, with that job, hung himself in a luxury suite in France. They say 2000, zero, zero, party over, oops, out of time. So tonight I'm gonna party like it's 1999. I knew a nigga in high school that was an urban genius. This motherfucker's grades were so good, he got all the way from the hood to an Ivy League school with a full scholarship. From there, the motherfucker got himself into one of the best law schools in the country. And when he was in law school, he met a woman, and they fell in love, and they were gonna get married. I remember him telling me about it. He was home for Christmas, and I told him, I said, my man, my man, Save that bitch for late in your life. <laughs> but he's in love. He didn't listen to me. He married her while he was in law school. And sadly, they got divorced while he was in law school. <laughs> he was a street nigga from the hood. This man had nothing. And that bitch took half of that. <laughs> and then I just never saw him again for years. And then two years ago, I was home in D.C. doing some shopping, trying to buy my sons some socks at Foot Locker. I go to Foot Locker, guess who's the manager? That nigga. <laughs> Dressed like a referee, the whole shit. <laughs> this motherfucker is 45 years old. We went out drinking that night just trying to catch up. And, and he told me, he said he's been living with his mother for like 10 years, just trying to get back on his feet. But that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is, never occurred to this nigga to kill himself. <laughs> he's alive and well in DC. I even suggested to him that he should try it out. Like, I don't know, nigga, he might be. <laughs> Nobody's life is perfect. No matter what it looks like from the outside, you don't know what the fuck's going on inside. I have a great life, but it's not a perfect life. But it's good. It's, my shit's like an above ground pool. You ever seen one of them? Man, it's a pool. <laughs> so in that spirit, tonight I thought I'd start my show a little differently. Tonight I'm gonna do something that I'm not particularly good at, but that I like to do. Tonight I'm gonna try some impressions out. I only got two. All right, the first impression's kind of dumb, but I like it. This, this is my impression, you ready? This is my impression of the founding fathers of America when the Constitution was being written. You ready? Here it goes. Hurry up and finish that Constitution, nigga. I'm trying to get some sleep. <laughs> it's not bad, right? All right, the next one. The next one's a little harder. I wanna see if you can guess who it is I'm doing an impression of. All right, let me get into character. You gotta guess who it is, though. <clears throat> okay, here it goes. Uh, duh, hey, duh. If you do anything wrong in your life, duh, and I find out about it, I'm gonna try to take everything away from you. And I don't care what I find out. It could be today, tomorrow, 15, 20 years from now, if I find out you're fucking duh finished. Who, who's that? 
That's you. That's what the audience sounds like to me. That's why I don't be coming out doing comedy all the time, because y'all niggas is the worst motherfuckers I've ever tried to entertain in my fucking life. Oh. I'm goddamn sick of it. This is the worst time ever to be a celebrity. You're gonna be finished. Everyone's doomed. <laughs> Michael Jackson has been dead for 10 years, and this nigga has two new cases. <laughs> and if you haven't watched that documentary, uh, then I'm begging you, don't watch it. <laughs> it's fucking gross. I felt like HBO was sticking baby dicks in my ears for four hours straight. Really nasty shit. I don't want to know all these things. Turns out, uh, Michael Jackson allegedly likes a long gander at the anus. So they said he stares at people's buttholes. That's what they said. That's how gross the documentary was. I'm gonna say something that I'm not allowed to say. <laughs> but I gotta be real. Uh, I don't believe these motherfuckers. <laughs> I do not believe them. <laughs> but let me qualify the statement. I, I am what's known on the streets as a victim blamer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody come up to me like, Dave, Dave. Chris Brown just beat up Rihanna. I'll be like, well, what did she do? <laughs> Dave, Michael Jackson was molesting children. Well, what were those kids wearing at the time? <laughs> I don't think he did it. But you know what? Even if he did do it, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it's Michael Jackson. <laughs> I know more than half the people in this room have been molested in their lives. But it wasn't no goddamn Michael Jackson, was it? <laughs> this kid got his dick sucked by the king of pop. All we get is awkward thanksgivings for the rest of our lives. <laughs> you know how good it must have felt to go to school the next day after that shit? Hey, Billy, how was the weekend? How was my weekend? <laughs> Michael Jackson sucks my dick. That was my first sexual experience. If I'm starting here, then well, sky's the limit. <laughs> I know it seems harsh, but man, somebody's got to teach these kids. There's no such thing as a free trip to Hawaii. <laughs> He's gonna wanna look at your butthole or something. You know why I don't believe it? You know why I don't believe it? Because if Michael Jackson's out here doing all this molesting, then, then why not Macaulay Culkin, hmm? Macaulay Culkin said in an interview that Michael Jackson never did anything inappropriate with him or even around him. Think about that shit. You know, I'm not a pedophile. <laughs> but if I was, Macaulay Calkins the first kid I'm fucking, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> I'd be a goddamn hero. Hey, that guy over there fucked the kid from Home Alone. And you know how hard he is to catch.
<laughs> My mind's telling me no 